With regard to policy, um, which, which is a, a vital mm. part of the, the process of um, um, accepting developers to come in and, and, mm. and start projects, in what areas is MRA working with the government to develop mm. policy that, that meets criteria that's, mm. that's um, useful or up to mm. standard? Mm. Yeah, the MRA is a regulatory authority. Um, we advise government on policy implications, but we don't actually um, write or develop policies. The agency of government that does that is the Department of Mineral Policy. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that would be the better agency to respond directly, but mm -hmm. the MRA has assisted the Department of Mineral Policy on aspects of its revised mineral policies that are currently o over the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been reviewing and developing. Um, so we are a part of the state team that assists the department in trying to uh, make those policies, you know, applicable. Uh, given our uh, role in the industry, we have experience in terms of whether this policy is applicable in the in the sector or or, or no, you know. And so we have been working very closely with the Department of Mineral Policy in trying to uh, provide that assistance to them in so that they can be able to uh, finish off on those policies and have them ready for government to to adopt. Okay. So, the future obviously mm. is bright, as you've mentioned. Uh, we are looking at other metals. Uh, mm. We are looking at other minerals. Um, the other, I the other side of the equation is the environmental impact. Mm. Um, is MRA involved in any are areas with other countries who've had experiences mm. with regards mm. to minimizing the footprints of mines? Mm. If we're going to be bringing more online, uh, yes, we. I think earlier this year we did enter into an MOU with the uh, Korean government in mine remediation works. Uh, basically it's understanding how waste from the mine impacts the community and the environment and how best to minimize that. Uh, you can do several things, you know, you can, you can engineer it up front, so whatever you put out, you know, is not as toxic uh, as, it, as you know it might be, or even while the standards are well, well below the the uh, international best practice, mm -hmm. you can still do something to them so that they're even lower. Um, yeah. So under the MOU with the Korean government. Um, we will be embarking on two mines first, and that is the Octedi mine and, yes. and Tolokuma. Now, why, why those two mines? Mm -hmm. um, those two mines belong to the government, okay. Octedi and Tolokuma. And so I, I believe that uh, we, the government, ha has a responsibility to ensure that we employ the highest standards, best practice on our minds prior to regulators like the MRA or the Department of Environment, for example, enforcing it on other mines. Um, and so we will be rolling it out on those two projects. And to do so, we will be engaging with those two mines. So we agree on programs and activities uh, because it is an MOU, it will be a joint program between Korean experts and uh, Papua New Guinean experts. Now, it's not only MRA. We're not, we're not the um, environmental agency here. So we play a facilitation role. We will bring in environment, we will bring in the uh, academic, we will bring in NGOs, whoever can add value to, you know, working on certain environmental projects, you know, will be co-opted to embark on these projects, yeah. Okay. Um, could you mention something about your presentation at the, at the China summit in Fujian province? Mm. Um, obviously, China is, 
is our biggest um, customer right now for nickel and cobalt. Um, what other areas mm -hmm. is China being involved in with, with mining in PNG? Yeah, we have also an MOU between the MRA Geological Survey okay. and the China Geological Survey. Okay. Under that MOU, and um, we started last year, uh, we mapped certain highly prospective areas around the country. Waubulolo, uh, Kanantu, and uh, our Chinese counterparts are coming back uh, this month, actually. And we will be embarking on a nationwide uh, geochemical sampling program. Basically, what it is is you're looking for uh, chemical or mineral signatures. Um, usually, you, you map the area out and then you see whether gold occurs in this area or copper occurs in this area. And those are the kind of details that investors would want at their fingertips. Uh, and so under this MOU and collaboration between MRA and the China Geological Survey, we will be completing a nationwide uh, geochemical sampling program. Okay. And the results of that hopefully will be presented at the same conference um, in China um, whenever that's up, up next. So we have a lot of new mines coming online. Um, are we doing anything to beef up our approval processes? Mm. Uh, yes, since Panguna, you know, we've learned a lot. Um, we, PNG is a proven mineral jurisdiction, yeah, meaning we have value in the ground. We have the minerals sitting in the ground, and we've had experience developing this. Uh, or developing mines. Um, but we have learned from the way we've approved these projects and so the MRA is now in the process of uh, you know, standing back and looking back at how we can further improve the process of permitting these mines. Of course, part of it requires collaboration within government. I need the Department of uh, Environment, I need Commerce, I need Treasury, I need, you know, all these other government departments. But I cannot, or the MRA is not in a position to influence how they contribute to that statutory approval. Okay. Uh, most of it occurs with, under the Mining Act, and that's where it sits directly under the MRA. As you know, the mining legislations have been uh, revised. Uh, the Department of Mineral Policy is very advanced on that uh, document. So we are engaging with them on how best to, uh, you know, reduce the turnaround time for this permitting process. One, two, look at all the bureaucratic hurdles mm -hmm. and help those assist those and uh, yeah so that you know investors that come in find it easy to do business in PNG um, we are embarking on the Wafi gold pool project now yes. that is going to be a huge project and so it is actually bigger than Octedi so how can we best uh, permit that project and turn it around within a time frame that the, this government wants. And that's my challenge. And that's a challenge of government. Um, so we are actually discussing between the MRA, between government and the uh, developers of Wafi Gopu, Nikrest and Harmony, on how do we collaborate to permit the project. Uh, we're looking at options like early works, for example, yeah? What you would normally do come permitting, why don't we look at doing this upfront? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we cut down on the time required to, be, you know, passing it to and fro. Okay. But these are options, and uh, 
we are confident that you know before the end of the year we would agree on a protocol on a framework on how best to uh, permit these projects and to turn them around so that it you know it's make, makes it easy for not only government but also for the project uh, proponents okay um, from a layman's perspective mm -hmm. and the man on the street um, they'll be hearing you talking about all these new mines coming on mm -hmm. and of course the big question would be don't we have enough mines already or is there enough land left to be kept as um, reserved land or traditional land or will all of PNG be mined sooner or later? That's an interesting question. I, I get asked that uh, you know everywhere I go. Um, it's not like the country is littered with mines such that we probably don't need any more mines. Um, if you look at the, the mines, they are geographically spread. And so they're not highly concentrated in a particular area or province or so forth. Um, one, two, given our, the way the, the laws are structured, uh, the exploration companies actually explore, right? And they prove up what's in the ground and then they take it up to a stage where they feel they have an economic deposit. Mm -hmm. the, the next process in, in our act, in, in the law, in the mining laws, is that you develop it. So it is the proponent, really, that's driving the development of mining projects. Once they submit it to the state by way of uh, project feasibility or bankable you know, studies, the government then has a responsibility to assess those projects. And that's when I want to answer your question. Right? So the proposal for developing the projects are now with government. Um, the decision then as to whether, oh, listen, we've got eight mines already and I think that's enough for government. So why don't we put that aside? It's not a decision for the MRA to make. Mm -hmm. It is a decision for government to make. And if that is the wisdom of government, that let's apply the brakes on the mines. And uh, for the next 10 years, uh, you know, that w the MRA will respect the decision. As we speak, we are not aware of uh, any policy directive uh, on applying brakes on mines. Uh, the business of mining is, is quite different as well. You have mines that come on stream and they tell you, oh, 10 year life, 20 year life. But we don't control the forces that make that mine economic. Supposing Wafi comes on stream and says, I'll be operating for 20 years. The price of the metals are right here. That's why it's operating. Mm -hmm. You and I don't know what happens in five years' time. Mm -hmm. We run the risk of applying brakes and then find out that the mines are not complementing each other, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, mm, yeah, I, I would encourage government to, to go down the track of developing a strategic plan so you understand how each of these mines come on stream. You have an intelligence about what the market forces are, and so you are confident. If should you want to go down the direction of, you know, applying brakes, that you are well informed and and therefore confident in the decision that you make. Yeah, but as it is, I would rather we continue with the status quo. Okay. okay. So, the message that's being retained mm -hmm. here and again is that. Mm -hmm there is a big future for mining in PNG. Uh, we have the mining conference coming up in Sydney in a couple of weeks time. Mm. Um, obviously the MRA will be involved. Mm. Um, what's your take on it? How will PNG come out of that mining conference? If you look at it from the exploration space and in the mining space, um, we have excelled in, on both fronts. Yeah, the exploration projects, um, our dealing with communities on permitting those projects plus 
uh, the mines. Um, we've had mines that have come on with difficult uh, challenges, you know, hanging on them. Mm -hmm. We've been able to actually deal with those in order to permit these projects. Um, for Sydney, I, my view is that we should be selling you know, the mines. We should be selling the, the sector, the exploration and mining sector. Uh, it should be an environment where you know, there's an upbeat of the positive aspects. This is not to say, well, aren't you, what's the balance between the negatives and the positives? Yeah. Uh, but it, at the forum, it is an investment promotion forum. I am confident that both government in the work that we're currently doing on, on reviewing the mining legislation and the mineral policies, um, we have a number of things that we can stand on as a platform in order to, to uh, create an environment in Sydney where we're able to confidently say, you know, you can do business in Papua New Guinea. Um, and this is where we're improving the way we do business. Mr. Samara, looking ahead for MRA, um, mm. what are the developments that we can be expecting in regards to what MRA will be working on? Yeah, the MRA has been around for the last uh, going eight years now, mm -hmm. so we really don't have a long history. Uh, but we do have experience going back Department of Mining days and mm -hmm. so on. Okay, um, maybe in, in closing, uh, thank you for asking. Um, the MRA a few weeks back held an alluvial mining uh, convention and uh, that was to showcase what MRA as the regulator was involved in in terms of spotlighting the alluvial sector. Uh, as you know, the alluvial sector, you don't hear much about it. It's the large hard rock mines that are currently in production that makes the news. Uh, but the alluvial sector is, is absolutely a critical area. It is where our people actually are. And, uh, you know, you, you can't walk past it. We are now embarking on a committed and dedicated program to spotlight the alluvial sector, to better regulate that sector, to ensure that people are trained in the sector. We do have a small-scale mining school up in Wau that's been running for the last uh, three years. And, uh, you know, we train people in, the, in various aspects of all alluvial mining, from environment to identifying rocks all the way right down to, uh, you know, extracting the gold. Yeah. And so uh, the alluvial sector needs to be strengthened. Right now, somebody can go in and simply destroy the environment while accessing the alluvials. That's not responsible. So we are putting in place measures and doing it collaboratively with the sector itself to try and ensure that some regulation is actually put in place to support that sector, uh, to ensure that the sector is developed uh, uh, responsibly. It is a big money area. Yeah. Um, the best thing about the sector is that the person goes down, picks up the gold, mm -hmm. makes the money, buys the food, and doesn't need government. Mm -hmm. We need to help that sector, and we are committed to doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, if you train the people well, if you provide them the means and the tools uh, to be able to do it, they will actually grow that sector. The sector will actually complement what the currently hard rock operating mines are currently doing. Um, so it is a priority for the MRA. We have a plan and a program to continue over the next three years in our, in our uh, aim to ensure that there is regulation and assistance to the sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one. Secondly, the MRA is um, 
See, we have our own plans, but that, that's MRA as MRA, MRA as the regulator. Most of our mandate comes from the Mining Act, mm -hmm. which is written. So I, usually I don't invent too many things. The law is there. I simply ensure it's been enforced. But we have a mandate to ensure government and the sector is actually grown, is actually attended to, is made viable, is made attractive. And so we are now embarking on developing the PNG mineral strategic plan for PNG, for the country. Um, that's a plan that would complement the government's vision for the mining sector that's contained in the vision 2050 and the medium term you know, development strategies. Um, because if you look at it, uh, that, that plan, that development plan for the country has high end statements, you know. By 2030, by 2050, we would be here, right? Mm -hmm. We would double the mineral uh, receipts for the country or double the number of mines or whatever. Uh, but how do you get there? Right? What road do you follow? What's your plan? Do you know what you're doing to actually give effect to those? We are now developing that plan. How soon can we see that plan? You will actually see that plan January 1, 2015. Okay. Yeah, we will be actually launching it in January. Um, we are having time off over the next few weeks to put that plan together. And it is not something that will be grown outside. We've had 39 years of doing this business. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. it's right here, right? Mm -hmm. And so we are very confident. We want to develop that plan and to bring it to government for endorsement so they can appreciate that, yes, to achieve this, we agree with the steps, plans, activities that the MRA will embark on in order to achieve it. Um, like I said, we're doing this on the back of the next 10 years. We're standing here now and looking in the next 10 years. And I said in the beginning of this program, they will be exciting yeah, with all the diversification, with all the world-class operations. And so on that backdrop, the strategic plan will be developed such way it holds all of those together. At the end of the day, it complements the government's agenda, strategy on developing the exploration and mining sector in, in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Mr. Philip Summer, mm -hmm. Managing Director of Mineral Resources Authority, thank you for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay.